Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Miss Benita and I'm helping out my Denver friend, Miss Fun, make these videos for you about the unit changing landforms. We're in the fourth chapter, third lesson, and this is broken up into three parts. All right, so let's get started. Making models of streams. In the last lesson, we used a sand model to investigate the idea that loose materials affect how fast a landform erodes. We also took a look at this book, Making Models of Streams. We introduced scientist Chris and how she uses models to study streams. In this lesson, we will build on our understanding that scientists make models to answer questions about the real world. All right, this activity, we will set up the reading of the book. And the second video in this lesson is the reading of the book. We'll use the pictures in this book to think about the similarities and differences between the stream model and, the re and a real stream, okay? You will find numbered questions in your packet. And remember, if you don't have the packet, any piece of paper, as long as you have something to write with, is all you need. You can also answer the questions by writing them down, talking to someone, a family member perhaps, or thinking about them in your head. All right, let's get started. What ideas do you have about model streams and real streams? Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at the questions in the packet if you have them and jot down some of your ideas. We'll be re we will be visiting these questions together. All right, let's take a look. What ideas do you have about model streams and real streams? Some of you said, model streams are what scientists make to study streams and what might happen over longer periods of time. A real stream can only be studied for a much shorter time span. Okay. I'll read the first few pages of this book. Let me get that going here. Chris Chifani has always loved water. When she was a kid, her yard had a stream in it. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool, huh? She played in the stream. Chris says, I loved putting rocks in the stream. I could change how the water flowed. Today, Chris Chafrani is a water scientist. Like all scientists, Chris asks questions. Many of her questions are about streams. Chris asks questions like, when there is less rain, what happens to streams? How do roads and buildings affect streams? How do streams change during floods? Do you live near a stream? Do you know where there's a stream nearby? Chris doesn't just ask questions, she figures out the answers too. One way she does this is by observing streams. She looks at the streams carefully and notices how they change. She measures how much water flows in the stream. She observes the rocks, sand, and soil in the stream bed. Observations can help scientists answer their questions. Chris makes observations of the rock, sand, and soil in real stream beds to help her answer questions about how streams work. Scientists have another way of figuring things out. They can make models. This photo shows a model that Chris made. The model represents a stream. It's a wooden box filled with plastic sand. It has a hose for pouring water over the sand. The water flows over the sand like a stream flows over the land. That rhymes. Chris teaches young scientists. She and the young scientists use this model to investigate questions about streams. Here's another question for you. How is the stream model similar to a real stream? OK, 
Okay, some of you said, the model represents the stream. The water flows over the sand like stream flows over the land. Picked up on that rhyme, did you? All right, page six. The young scientists want to study floods. In a flood, lots of water flows through a stream. The scientists think that a flood erodes a stream bed and changes its shape. They don't know exactly how the stream changes, though. They want to investigate this question. How does a stream bed erode during a flood? They can't investigate this question in a real stream. They might have to wait years for a real flood to happen. Instead, they can investigate with a model. Remember, scientists create models when they can't investigate the real thing. So I'd like you to read the rest of the book. Remember, it's the part two in the videos for this lesson, for lesson four. You can also try to view the reading video inside of this video by choosing this YouTube link. See you in a bit. All right, welcome back. Let's look back at an important science word from this book, scale. I will read from this page that has the word scale. Models don't have to be exactly this, like the real thing. A model can be different in ways that make it easier to investigate. One important difference is the scale of the model. Real streams are big, but the model is small. It can fit in a room. Using a model that is similar, using a model that is smaller than a real stream makes it easier to investigate. I'm kind of visualizing the the size of the stream and how you would bring that to scale inside of a room. We've been thinking about scale as how big or small something is. Geologists also use scale to investigate how fast or slow events happen. As geologists, we will continue to think about scale, both for size and for time. Let's punctuate this vocabulary word scale. How big or small something is, or how fast or slow events happen. What is another example of scale from the book? All right, some of you chose page 11. To represent the stream bed, scientists use plastic sand. The pieces of plastic sand are smaller and lighter than real sand. The plastic sand is the right scale for the small model. The water in the model isn't powerful enough to erode real sand. It can erode light plastic sand though. So here we're trying to recreate the action of a stream by using water that flows lightly and sand that's plastic. Okay. In this lesson, we learned that models can help us visualize how something happens and can provide evidence to help answer questions about how the real world works. In the next lesson, we will gather together our different pieces of evidence to help us explain how landforms can erode quickly. Well, I will see you for part three of this lesson. Bye for now.